This is WSUR, and you're locked and loaded into the G spot. I am Crazy G. We are going to the phones right now. We have Johnny Wild, lead guitarist and vocalist for Blindside Thunder. Yeah, how y'all doing? All right, what's going on? I'm just hanging out here having some cocktails. Welcome to the G Spot, and thanks for taking the time to speak with us. How goes the rock and roll? Uh, it's pretty good, pretty uh, pretty pumped up. The guys are ready to go. It's nothing but a party, you know that. For those who have been in a cave and don't know about BST, can you tell us about the band? Well, we formed about a year ago, and just out of the remnants of just a couple different bands, a lot of guys, uh, our drummer, uh, the general Jerry, he's from uh, California. Uh, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, the bass player Danny, he's from from uh, Providence. We kind of got together and put something down and, and thought we had something, went in the studio, and we came out with The Storm, and we released that in uh, April of 2013. It's our first endeavor, and it's our uh, stepping stone into what we call Rebel Rock. Can you tell us what it was like writing and making this CD? I don't know. I read a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, feedback from other people who've waited their entire lifetime to write something like this. I think it's just a, it's just a combination of a lot of things. You hear a lot of uh, you know heavy riff stuff, groove-oriented stuff, you hear um, a little bit of Southern Rock, that's where I come in. Uh, in, in Columbus, Ohio, that you get a little bit of everything. You had the Leonard Skinner, the Blackwood, along with, you know, ACDC, the Pantera, and everything else, and Metallica. So there's just a lot of combinations of everything in there. It was a good time, actually. Uh, we did it here in uh, Providence, uh, Joe Moody Studios. He's a uh, great guy, and a uh, great guy to work with. We're going to work with him uh, in the upcoming 2014 for the next CD that's going to be coming out. The whole CD is packed full of great tunes. The first track, Dream girl kicks it into high gear immediately was that the idea for the first track on the cd to just pound it i'll tell you guys a little secret the whole beginning of dream girl was a mistake <laughs> really yeah we, we did we were we were starting it off we were trying to get trying to get a good tempo for it and you know what the drummer everybody just stopped i kept playing then we listened to it back and playback and i said well you know what sounds like it worked and you know it was intentionally to get us something going to something to be more punchy coming out the gate that kind of was palatable for everybody. I mean, uh, we've got a lot of people in, in their 20s, 30s, and some people e even older in 40s and 50s that, that like what we're doing. I think it's kind of a widespread Pandora's box, if you will, of, of people that kind of dig the uh, the limits of our, our music and and it's more of a rebellious like let's where's the where's the girls where's the booze where's the party it's the rebel rock thing we can BSC keeps pushing that you know we do too much in life we keep pushing hard time to back off every now and then and fire up a, a little shot of tequila you know <laughs> well I join you for that shot and just to let you know I'm in that forty to fifty category but I, I hey, nothing wrong with that yeah. nothing wrong with that no nothing I know that. I know man but I love it you know uh, take me down is now one of my favorites. Can you tell us what went into writing this song? Yeah, good question. Uh, <laughs> I don't even I don't even know if you can really talk about it, but uh, it was one of those things where you come up with a riff, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big Ted Nugent fan. I'm a big White Snake guy. I liked all this stuff back in the day, and I wanted something to come off almost like a Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Uh, they did some songs in that vein with that open chordal progression thing, and I wanted to try something, and I said, hey, we need some big, big background vocals. It kind of all worked out. It was it was just it came it came together really nice. I mean, uh, I can't say I can't stress enough about how how much fun it was writing that song more than anything else. I mean, when you hear it at the end, it's all composite. You want to start off slow, and you got that little big crescendo build into the into the intro. I, I think it's phenomenal. And, and live, that is our last song of the night. And let me tell you what, that thing is thunder. I mean, when we play that thing, it's just nothing but power. It is a great track, and I'll tell you, some of the bands you mentioned, I just seen Ted Nugent a couple weeks back in Blackfoot and Richie Blackmore, uh, these are the bands I grew up on, and you're right. It gives you that sense or that feeling of those bands. Blue Agave is very bluesy. What is the story behind this song? Well, basically, it's kind of a tribute to uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I mean, I, I, I had been playing around with a, uh, a lick for a couple years, and I, I saw Stevie Vai do something, and I was like, yeah, maybe I can try something like that. And uh, guys, guy's a, a legend. But I was messing around with something. I had the idea. And I said, you know what? What is the place that I always looked up to when I was growing up? And it was like 
like, you know, I grew up on, like, Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis. That's what my parents listened to. And I was like, well, wait a minute. You know, it's Texas. You know, you got the Stevie Ray Vaughan thing, and then Nashville, Memphis. And then uh, Ohio, we had a place called Buckeye Lake, and we used to go there when I was growing up. And we used to have good parties and everything out there, and there's nothing uh, nothing like firing it up in the old Buckeye State, you know, <laughs> uh, on a weekend, sitting out in the sun, and you got the boats flying by. You. And that's kind of where it came from. I'm, you know, a favorite uh, drink is tequila, you know, obviously. And uh, I like down south. I like the sun. I like the water. I like the surf. And it just kind of came out of this. Like, you know, some of the places where people, you know, where big music and things come out of, where, where, they, uh, where basically the ancestors came from, you know? Well, I mean, rock and roll. Rock and roll is American built, baby. That's rebel rock, man, right there. It's, you didn't go to Germany or Japan to get rock and roll. It came right there from the heartland, you know? I think that's what some of these people forget, you know? That, that, that's not an import, baby. That's an, that's an export. Part of the gross national product. <laughs> I thought we can't forget that. We can't forget that uh, there's a lot of these people that paved the way, you know? People might not like Elvis, but you got to understand the people he was with, you know? The Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, you know, you had Waylon Jennings in there. You had all Johnny Cash. You had all these people that were, were, were laying down the, what we call metal or rock today. They were laying it down back then. They were a bunch of rebels, and that's what we're trying to bring back. We're trying to pay homage to it, but we're not trying to uh, bring back a, a funner side of it, you know? Right. Not everybody hates their parents, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we may hate our jobs, we may hate our lives, but, you know, for 30 minutes, you could put on a BSE record, a CD. I just dated myself. You could put on a BST CD, and you can go have fun, kick back and crank it up, cook the burgers out on the on the grill, have fun at the pool, and do some shots. What are some of your and or the band's musical influences, other than, you know, what you mentioned? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I, I tell you, for me personally, for me personally, I, I kind of, you know, the first thing I ever heard, uh, obviously, was the older stuff, but as I got older, you know, um, Angus Young from ACDC, um, obviously, Eddie Edward Van Halen. I mean, uh, I, I remember being outside shooting hoop, and we had uh, a radio station in Columbus on, and I heard uh, Women and Children First, and I didn't know. I, I thought I was going to lose my mind. Nah. I ran back in the house, and I cranked that thing up. I said, nobody plays like that. You still had the Led Zeppelin, you know, that washover. That was big, you know, before uh, uh, John Bond and pass away. Even today, you know, I'll listen to Five Finger Death Punch. You know, I'll listen to Shine Down. Yeah, I'll listen to Nickelback. I mean, you got you got the guy's a hit-making machine, you know? And, and you look at these guys and what they've done. I, I like, uh, for the progressive side, I listen to Dream Theater, a big fan of them, Symphony X. And a band that's actually a friend of mine, he's coming up into your neck of the woods on uh, in October, it's Big Daddy Rich and uh, Texas Hippie Coalition. I mean, uh, you know, I listened to the Pantera back in the day, um, but there's a lot of great bands out there now that just bringing the hammer. There's there, there's not a lot of bands though in that rock category that you know that we're in, which is which is cool because if somebody's got to do it. But you got to respect everybody out there writing their own tunes and putting them out there. You know, like I said, there's only two types of music, man, and that's good music and bad music, and that's pretty much all it is. If it sounds good, it's good. You know, it's kind of if it feels good, do it. What styles of music would you say you incorporate into BSD? You know, I tell you, I, I, I if anybody's a big fan of uh, Black Label Society. They'll hear some of the Zach Wilde solo stuff in there, the pentatonic stuff that I do. Just in chord progressions, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, you call it like it is, but Bon Jovi and Richie Sambor wrote some of the most memorable progressions you can put in there, so, you know, you can't go too far and uh, not use maybe some of their influences. Obviously, uh, Green Day kind of stuff. I like that skater punk, the offspring. There's not really one thing. It's kind of like, again, if I get that beat, we get that drive, we get that pounding in there. You know, that's the most important part. You know, sometimes it doesn't always reflect what you hear on the uh, recording. But boy, you come in here at live and you're like, wow, okay, I know where that came from. I'll tell you, I hear a lot of everything in that, and you're exactly right. It, it's a little bit of everything, and I think that's what makes this CD so versatile. You you can feel it. You can hear it. How hard was it to develop your first full-length CD, and has the road been an easy one? And did you think you'd get this far this fast? Uh, that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> let's, do, let's do the first thing. Uh, doing the CD. Um, it's great. There, let me tell you what. There's guitar players out there that listen to your show right now that'll smoke me right now. I'm telling you that right now. There's a there's probably a guy sitting in his basement that's gonna you know do the Ingve Mountain until I, I'm blue in the face. And then there's other guys that just can't do it. Well, you know, I kind of stuck with it. And if you're persistent enough and you want it bad enough, it'll happen. It's the it's not so much being able to write the songs or put them together. It's trying to find the other guys. If you're not a solo artist, finding the other components that make the make the 
train function. Some of the stuff doesn't, you know, you can have a riff. Let's take, let's take Dream Girl, for instance, the one you, you were talking about, the first song. You know, if you don't have the drive and you don't hear it, it doesn't happen. It just comes up like an 80s riff, you know? And you don't want to date it, but you kind of want to make it as modern as you can. So you still have to have a good drummer. You have to have good bass players. You have to have guys buying into the whole thing. To think that uh, it was complicated, I think what happens is that you get in there and you expect so much from yourself that you forget that sometimes there's other guys in the band that help you get achieve the goal and they're as much part of it as anything else. I may write riff, I may come up with lyrics, but let me tell you what, it is an open forum when you get in the studio because one guy will hear it differently and when, he, when, when you hear it over and over, you'll say, hey man, that change might be cool. Uh, pretty much to answer your last part of your question, did I ever think we'd get to having 40,000 fans on Facebook? Did I get uh, that we'd ever be number one in Reverb Nation? No, no, not in my wildest dreams. I, I didn't I didn't think it would ever get to this. Would I get to play the venues and, and do the things we're doing now? You know what? I want to say yes, but you got to say no because I'm still humble about it. You know, I, I talk to people after the shows. You know, we'll sit down, maybe have a beer, a cold one or whatever. And I like talking to fans about their music, equipment. I love talking to guitar players about equipment, about phone. Yeah, you know, I'm just a normal guy. I'm a fan of the stuff I talked about. I'm a fan of other bands, even the new music. I, I'm as much of a fan as anybody else. So that way, I, I, I want to say, I want to say connected. You know, it's not, uh, I may be doing something that people like for 30 minutes that maybe aren't musicians, but there are musicians out there. Hey, you got a question? How did you do this? What do you recommend? You call me, email me. I don't care. If there's any question, I'll be there 24 hours a day. If it helps, then maybe I help somebody else. It may be better. It may take music in a whole nother direction, you know? Are there any special memories as of yet since the band's inception that you could share with us? I think the day that you get to see it on iTunes, the day that your finished product comes out and people start recognizing it when when people recognize you outside of the shows i think that it's awesome but i i, I kind of the one thing that i, I want to tell everybody about is when you hear them clap when you hear the crowd clap in appreciation for a job you did that right there man you, there's not enough money in the world that can that can compensate that feeling that high you get you know it, it's just so awesome to know that somebody out there says hey man you guys did it it sounds great keep going i'm going to support you and i we love our fans we got fans in brazil belgium all over japan you know we've got them everywhere and just the other day 402 fans signed up on on the website from brazil you know i mean it, it, it's 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 humbling you know just to think you're just this little cog in this wheel you know we're nothing and that these people dig down deep and want to be fans of something that they had to go look for and now they found something they like it so it, it, it means a lot to us what is next for bst are you guys contemplating a nationwide tour has the writing process started already on another full length or are you just savoring this one for a while longer oh no like you said we don't take it for granted I mean um, I've already started doing at least four four new songs for the uh, new CD I, I can't tell you date we really don't have it it's on the rough stages um we're not taking it for granted. We, you know what? We figured this one, you know, is the beginning. It's not really us yet. I mean, we haven't, I don't think we've really matured in the writing process together. So I think some of the things that you're going to see are going to get bigger, heavier, faster, and they're going to be solid. And we're very proud of what we put out. Don't get me wrong. But you always want to get bigger. You want to get better. You know, that, that's the whole thing about Rebel Rock. You know, the party it may start off small, but once we get that bad boy going, y'all going to come up and we're going to have one heck of a hoot and nanny, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as touring, uh, uh, that's one of the things that uh, we've had uh, some band meetings about with our, our, our local people, talking about getting out there. Obviously, we will be coming to Worcester. I can tell you that. I know that we're going there. I know that we're going to be in Hartford. So those are the things regionally I know are going on. Right now, you got to wait for the right hookup to come around and the agents and everybody to work everything out to get you with that. Obviously, I would have loved to have been on the Danzig TAD bill that's coming up there in October. Um, obviously, that that's not going to happen. But, you know, we're going to try to hook up with anything coming through here, going 95 south into Richmond and North Carolina and uh, Pennsylvania and Jersey. I know that that's going to happen probably around February. I don't really want to let the cat out of the bag, but that's kind of where it's rolling right now. You guys are trying to write a novel, and I truly believe that the storm is the first chapter in this novel, and I believe it's only going to get better for you guys. I just want to thank you. I want to give a shout out to you know who, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to Ronnie, for setting this up. I appreciate it. Ron, yeah, that's for you, bud. I wish you the best of luck. I wish BST the best of luck. I can't wait to hear new stuff. I'll be playing this CD for a while. Just keep rocking it, man. And again, thank you for taking the time to call in and talk to us here on the G-Spot. Very much appreciated. It was my-
my privilege. And anybody out there, it doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter how long you've been in it, what you like, don't like, there's something for you. BlindsideThunder.com. You can catch us on Facebook. You can catch us anywhere. We want to see people at the shows. Come and download the storm for free off the website. We're on iTunes. We're on Django. We're on Spotify. We're out there. It was my privilege and my humble honor to be on your show today, sir. Hey, just remember, be at the end of Rebel Walk. We love to party. That was Johnny Wilde, the lead guitarist and lead vocalist for Blindside Thunder. I'm out of here. Have a good one.